So we've been getting a lot of questions about anode rods for RV water heaters. Questions like, what are they and what are they for? And what's the difference between magnesium and aluminum? And most importantly, how do I change my anode rod in my water heater? So the purpose of an anode rod is to be sacrificial and sacrifice itself over the tank of your water heater because of hard minerals that might be in the water that we run through our RVs. If you travel with your RV a lot, chances are you might not see a lot of hard water at the places where you stay. If you are, have a permanent campsite where your trailers are in a single spot all the time, and if that campground has hard water, you may be more acceptable to this issue. What's the difference between aluminum and magnesium, and which one should I use? And well, it comes down to how much hard water you see in your travels. We travel a lot. We're putting a lot of different types of water from different campgrounds through our RV's water system. And we don't typically see a lot of hard water. Um, so in the past when I've used aluminum rods, they really don't sacrifice themselves much. Where the magnesium rod sacrifices some, but definitely more than what the aluminum does. And I personally want to see some sacrifice on the rod because otherwise I'm wondering whether or not it's really helping my tank. So we run the magnesium rod in that case. But if you're in a situation where maybe you have a, a, a permanent site or a seasonal site where the water never changes, maybe they do have hard water. You might want to go with an aluminum rod that can try to counteract some of those hard metals that are in the water so that it doesn't eat away at your water heater tank. And then there's the biggest question we get from you guys as well as we see in the RV Facebook groups and things like that is how do you go about changing your anode rod? And I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I went ahead and changed our anode rod in our RV. So to get started, make sure you've turned off the water to your RV, let your water heater cool down because we're gonna open up this pressure release belt and let any pressure that's on the tank off. We don't wanna get burnt while we're doing that. So we can go ahead and remove the anode rod. For this, we're gonna need a one and one sixteenth inch socket. Those are typically a deep well. And we'll go ahead and remove the rod and let our tank drain. So once we're drained, we're gonna have to go ahead and flush any particles that are in the bottom of the tank out of here. We don't want that stuff in there clogging up uh, any screens or filters in our RV. So it's a good idea to go ahead and flush while we are right here. Now, the R anode rod really didn't need to be replaced, but I replace these every season. I like using the magnesium rods over the aluminum. They seem to sacrifice a little easier um, if the water's not that hard. Um, we want this rod to sacrifice and not our tank. So we'll go ahead and put some Teflon tape on our new anode rod. And a little trick here, we can put some paper on the bottom of that deep well socket. And what that does for us, it allows us to be able to put some pressure pushing on the anode rod when we try to get this started so we can get those threads in there. So once we got that started by hand, uh, so we don't cross thread those threads, we can go ahead and tighten it up our anode rod with our ratchet and socket. Make sure it's good and tight. And then we can go ahead and we can close off our pressure relief valve and go ahead and wrap up this job and get water reconnected to our RV. So hopefully that answers some questions that you may have had about anode rods for your RV's water heater system. And you can go pro ahead and protect that tank for many years to come and get lots of service out of it. Go ahead and comment down below. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. And until next time, guys, we'll see you on the road.